that was the sound of a small vacuum pump, the type that's used for uh, sealing food. Uh, what I'm going to do now is show how to flame seal a uh, sample uh, in a glass uh, tube. So this is just sand, and uh, I just pulled a vacuum on the tube. It's not uh, a super powerful vacuum, in other words, it's not uh, uh, like the type of vacuum you would uh, get from some of the more advanced uh, vacuum pumps that we have in the lab, but it'll get the job done. This is actually the first technique that I learned in graduate school as far as uh, scientific glass blowing. Uh, I had a sample in an NMR tube and it was air sensitive, so it had to be sealed under vacuum uh, before the uh, sample could be run. And literally the way I learned was I just picked up a hand torch and went at it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to be moving the hand torch back and forth, warming up this glass, and I'm trying to only heat a relatively small area of the glass, but I don't want to get it too hot too quickly, because since the glass is under vacuum, once it becomes liquid, once it becomes soft, it's going to collapse on itself. But that's actually part of the, that, that, that's the plan. Uh, underneath the sample, uh, I have a little sand bath, so that way uh, when the sample uh, needs to uh, drop, uh, I've got a safe place to put it. Uh, many times uh, we would use liquid nitrogen. Now, I'm going to pause here. Normally you shouldn't pause, but I want to point out you can see an indentation has started to form right here. So once you see that indentation, move to the opposite side and cause it to collapse, and then just kind of work your way around as the glass slowly collapses. Okay. And in many cases, when I'm heating the glass tubing, instead of pointing the flame directly at the tubing, I'm, I'm hitting the tubing with a glancing blow or very quickly going across because I want that, to, uh, uh, that tubing to be hot enough to move but not so hot uh, that it, uh, it collapses on itself and pops. And I'll, I'll do an example of that later. I, I actually showed my students that uh, what happens if you heat up your sample too fast. So I've got a section that's collapsed on itself. Now what I'm going to do is I'm turning my gas down to give me a much sharper flame. It's sharper and that will let me get in here without heating up too much glass. You have to be patient because I could make this go faster by using a larger flame but I'm more likely to lose control. So now what I'm going to do, I'm taking my tweezers to hold the sample to help stabilize it. And I'm pulling down just a little bit, and there it goes. And it's always a good idea to just gently heat this up. You can even give it like a little bit of a bushy annealing flame, just a teeny bit, uh, to help reduce the stress. You also want to make sure that the end is not pointy. This end I don't really care about. And so now, just place it in the sand to cool. My sample, obviously, is incredibly hot right here where I made the seal, but the sample itself is still at room temperature or very close to it. Experimentally, many times if you're working with a solid or a liquid, uh, instead of a sand bath, you would have it uh, in a liquid nitrogen bath, uh, and that would protect it from any heat and 
if you're working with a liquid, well, if you pull a vacuum on a liquid, it's going to vaporize. So you would actually use liquid nitrogen to freeze it uh, into a solid, flame seal it off, and then it, when it thaws out, uh, it, would be, it would be fine. What I'm going to do in this example is I'm going to show you how to do it wrong. So if you're too aggressive when you uh, are heating your tubing, uh, this is, so this is still under vacuum, so I've sealed the bottom uh, and I'm not going to clean it up. Uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get a good, hot, sharp flame. Uh, oops, there we go. Uh, much too aggressive uh, for what I'm trying to do here. So I come in here, and I really want to go to town on this. I want to I seal this thing. Now, if I come in because I'm impatient, okay, look at how that bubble of glass is sucked in. If it wasn't for the fact that just out of habit, I pulled away uh, within a fraction of a second, that glass would have popped. Uh, so let me, let me actually really, really do it wrong up here. Look at that. So you can see how that fragile little bubble of glass, uh, it's still... One more time. There it goes. Uh, so that's, that ruins your sample. That basically has broken the vacuum and uh, uh, it's, it's uh, basically you're back to square one. Even with these two where I, I managed to stop myself before the bubble popped, because of how thin this glass is, if I come back and use a flame right here, that's gonna pop uh, anyway. So uh, you have to be patient because the moment the glass starts to move, uh, if you keep the torch in the same spot, you're gonna, you're gonna pop it. Uh, and it was literally just out of uh, reflex, because I've done this so many times, uh, that in these two uh, cases, I pulled away uh, and managed to recover it. But at the end of the day, this would still be unacceptable because of how thin that bubble is. Maybe I might be able to, if I, make, if I made this indentation, I might be able to come down here and seal it and be okay. But I've really put myself in a bad position by having the glass suck in that much uh, uh, under vacuum uh, while I'm trying to uh, uh, flame seal this, uh, this tube. And to show the, uh, the, the details of the apparatus that uh, I'm using, so give just an overview. Uh, this little vacuum pump, uh, this is the type that's used for uh, sealing sandwich bags. Uh, then it has a vacuum hose. Uh, it comes up to a stopcock, which gives me some a little bit of control, so I can I can basically uh, close it. Uh, this ho hose comes down, uh, and that's where it connects uh, to the glass tube uh, that I'm that I'm sealing. Uh, and I have it drop uh, into this uh, uh, little sand pit, uh, but nothing uh, very complex. Over here we have a Schlenk line, actually a couple of Schlenk lines. Uh, these are the type of vacuum lines that I use for research. Exact same principle uh, as the uh, uh, experiment I just did before, except uh, you have vacuum and you have a nitrogen manifold uh, on a Schlenk line, which allows you uh, to evacuate and refill a, uh, a sample uh, with an inert gas. Uh, but anyway, this particular technique of flame sealing a uh, tube under vacuum, this is without a doubt one of the most important techniques that an inorganic chemist like myself can learn uh, as far as scientific glass blowing because you find many situations where you have an air sensitive or water sensitive compound and maybe you have to take a sample and get an NMR or send off a sample for elemental analysis and this is the method that you would use. Uh, you might use some nice ampules uh, but uh, using uh, just a straight piece of glass tubing that's been sealed at one end, all right, so this is just some 
some raw tubing uh, that I made this afternoon uh, to uh, uh, to practice this and earlier today my uh, my advanced inorganic students uh, were practicing this technique as well uh, and uh, it is again something that is critical uh, for uh, handling air sensitive compounds uh, or even compounds that are sensitive to water because once you've sealed it in the vacuum uh, you've protected it uh, 